wasn't real excited about me doing this whole comedy thing. But uh, he would have been more excited if I would have been like, I'm going back to college. But, you know, whatever. But my dad's a funny guy. He does this funny thing with his voice if you give him bad news. And if you're giving him bad news over the phone, he'll repeat certain words back to you in this really high-pitched voice. So that you don't have to be on the phone with me. You just gotta be in the room with him to know exactly what's going on. So I had to tell him about my friend getting caught on fire when I threw him off a roof. <laughs> that wasn't funny. That was for real. So I called my dad and I'm like, Dad, Dad, Beezer got caught on fire. Fire? <laughs> yeah, well I had thrown him off a roof. A roof? <laughs> Yeah, he's in the hospital. Hospital? I didn't even get that word out. Could you imagine the conversation I'd have with my father if I was to have an unexpected child? Can you imagine that? Pregnant? <laughs> Twins? <laughs> how fun. My friend had gotten out of prison and he was telling me how bad it was. And I'm like, dude, man, you don't know bad, okay? I work in a kitchen full of women, all right? <laughs> oh, man. I'm the only man, okay? You don't know bad. You got three topics of conversation. The changing prices of tampons. <laughs> coupons. And of course, the ever popular subject of hysterectomies. I had this lady come up to me the other week with a knick-knack and a smile. She's like, Brian, this is gonna go so good with the theme of my kitchen. What's the theme of your kitchen? Like, theme of my kitchen? What are you talking about? I don't know. Uh, dirty? I have a theme. Crazy. My friend wanted me to join another internet, like, socializing site. And I'm like, why? So I can tell even more people I'm poor, lonely, depressed, and childless? Because let me tell you something. My dating life is going about as good as Barack Obama's 100 days in, uh, of the presidency so far. Because he's spending a lot of money just like me, and we ain't getting nowhere. <laughs> because my dating life runs about as good as my luck at the casino, and the only machine that pays me out at the casino is the ATM. <laughs> that ain't gonna get you far. Although I did join two free internet dating sites, because I don't want to use the ones where you have to pay because uh, I don't believe in paying to be stood up. <laughs> this lady sent me a message on there. Didn't even say how old she was. But I had a pretty good idea of how old she was because she was suffering from dresser's disease. Her chest was falling into her drawers. <laughs> I, I was supposed to meet this other chick off here though, and she said she was average. And I like average. So I, so I met this girl, and I'm not exactly sure what scale of average that she was standing on, but it ain't the same scale I got in my bathroom. This girl was a planet. She wasn't even a brown bagger. She was a plastic bagger. She was the type of thing, you put a plastic bag on your head to start the date, and hopefully you suffocated before it's over. Yeah. She, she told me at the end of the day, she's like, I really wanted to hold your hand, but I didn't want you to be uncomfy. I was like, uncomfy? I was uncomfortable enough without you touching me, thank you. I would have been more comfortable in a prison shower, all right? If people keep seeing me with girls that look like that, they're gonna mess around and get the wrong idea, thinking I got the swine flu or something. <laughs> Yeah, my, my friend, uh, you know, I had told him, I was like, dude, I got a lot of problems. He's like, well, that's the first step, because many of you have a problem. I was like, I got a problem, what the hell are the other steps? Ain't nobody told me that yet. He's like, dude, you're going to go through a midlife crisis. You know, a lot of bad things have happened to you. You know, you lost your girl, your best friend stabbed you in the back. I know, I, that was you. I was like, yeah, midlife crisis, dude, try an all life crisis. The only painful thing about my death is going to be having to see my life flash before my eyes before I die. Alright? I've already seen that song and dance once, you know? Let's skip it and get to the good stuff. I think I get a lot of my stuff from my grandpa because he's a big time storyteller. And I was over there the other night telling him about my comedy and he was telling me that he had went to the dentist the other week. And he's like 80. And the dentist was like, you might want to look into getting some, some false teeth. My grandpa was like, well, I don't see the point in that. I'm 80 years old. He's like, well, I don't see what that has to do with anything. 
He's like, well, I would never get my use out of them. <laughs> I want to thank all my friends for coming out and everybody else. Thank you.